Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today, I want to talk about tripods. Uh, again. Those of you who have seen my recent review of the Cartoni SDS-8 know that the Cartoni allowed me the fastest setup and takedown times I'd ever seen. I loved it. But to Cartoni's misfortune, or fortune depending on your perspective on the old adage, any news is good news, Sockler simultaneously announced with much greater fanfare their new Flowtech series, a line of tripods which promises the same thing, operating speed combined with robustness and lightweight at a level never before seen. Clearly, sooner or later, I'd have to get my hands on a Flowtech and see how the two compared. Uh, but thanks to the good folks at B&H who provided me a loaner, it happened sooner. So let me give you the punchline right now. The Cartoni SDS-8 and similarly priced and spec Sockler Flowtech FSB6. They share a 75 millimeter bowl, eight kilo head load limit, uh, a price of $2,100 or so, hold that thought, and similar minimum and maximum heights, mm, hold that thought too, are both brilliant. You'd be fortunate to have either one in your kit. With this said, which one you prefer may well end up being a kind of Rorschach test or some other kind of test of your personality. Traditionalist versus modernist, retro versus futura, warmth versus cold, click versus clack, anal retentive versus anal expressive, mm. C-3PO versus Darth Vader? I'm not sure that this last one is fair to either of them, but that's what popped into my head, so I'm going with it, and it's much better than the alternative. Though, maybe, since the Cartoni absolutely is sexier, what about the machine in Mensch, uh, the robot Maria of Fritz Lang's 1927 masterpiece Metropolis? Yeah, but she was a nasty piece of work, too. In any event, if you're a hybrid shooter relying on, say, the new Sony a7R III or the Panasonic GH5, you may still wish that the Force was with you, or you knew an alchemist somewhere who could make these tripods even smaller, lighter, and less expensive without sacrificing the robustness, stillness, and speed. You know, like the size and weight of a Gitzel Mountaineer. Okay, that's officially piggy. Very, very piggy, because you just can't do the same things with a Mountaineer as you can with these bad boys, from going high to mounting sliders and more. And alchemy isn't real. Nor is the Force, I think. But let's get into the details, because they are simultaneously fascinating and revealing. Those details begin with a fundamental difference in approach each company took to solving the same challenge. At its most basic, Cartoni refined, Sockler reinvented, with an exception or two. With the SDS-8, Cartoni relied on traditional cylindrical carbon fiber tubes, and they're beautifully done. Sockler threw out the playbook and reimagined how carbon fiber could be formed resulting in a completely new cross-section, single form, within a single form, within a single form setup. Very Darth Vader. In a good way. In my kid gloves time with them, the very bottom line is that both approaches worked equally well. Though, I do wonder which one works better when you're in the field and you muddy them up or get sand into them. I guess we'll just have to see. Next. Moving from the bottom up, Cartoni uses its traditional rubber straps to hold the legs together when transporting by hand or storing in a bag. Now, in my earlier review, I found the SDS-8 straps a little bit fiddly, a little more difficult to use than the ones on my older Cartoni Focus HD, and now I understand why. There's less clearance for your fingers, and it makes a difference. Sockler, meanwhile, reimagined the same function and eliminated straps or clips altogether by replacing them with magnets. Very cool, and definitely a second or two faster. Though, you do have to wonder what happens as the magnets age. Do they weaken? I don't know if they're replaceable or not, but I'm hoping they are. Like I said, it's a difference of a second or three, or very occasionally, perhaps, skinning your fingers, but if you're like me, these things matter. Next. Cartoni refined the tripod's feet to look and operate very much like Sockler's feet, 
making it easy to move from flat rubber studio feet to double spiked field feet using a clever heavy duty rubber strap. Much superior to my old Cartoni's threaded spike feet, which were very good. But Sockler didn't sit still either and refined their indoor outdoor transition on the Flowtech to create an even better, easier, faster strap with a hard lever. Call it one generation newer. Though I'm not sure it's quite as robust as the older design. Next, Cartoni refined its leg locking mechanism. Like before, the lever floats along the top section or stage as the tripod extends, but now it can handle three sections or two stages rather than two or one. It's very fast. And it is this approach that sold me on the one stage, two section Cartoni Focus HD I bought with my own hard cash so many years ago. And it's also what got me so excited about the SDS. Although you can pinch the web between your forefinger and thumb if you aren't paying attention. For the Flowtech, Sockler reinvented the locking mechanism so that the single locking lever for each leg remains fixed at the top of the top section or stage while still managing to handle all three sections as well and added a three position lever just below the locking lever which allows you to lock the legs at one of two positions or continuously adjust each leg independently up to a full 90 degrees without a spreader. Of course, the bowl and the bowl locking lever limit how close you can get to the ground and Without a spreader, you'll really have to dig in with those spikes. I would not rely on the rubber feet's grip inside. On the other hand, the net result is that you can go even lower than the operating range typically specified, barely a foot off the ground, which is impressive. Speaking of spreaders, in a twist, it is Sockler that refined its mid-level spreader with that Darth Vader industrial design I quite like. Simple, minimal, workable, black by rotating the knobs 90 degrees. It makes things a touch easier, it looks nicer, but operationally it's still three knobs. This time it was Cartoni that reimagined the mid-level spreader so that it extends and collapses without the need to tighten or loosen any knobs, relying instead on a geared push-button redesign that is the best and most novel approach I've seen. It's definitely faster, a second or three, when moving from one shot to the next, but on the other hand, both tripods fold to the center at just about the same speed when you're collapsing them and taking them down. Altogether then, I'd rate the two set of sticks as roughly equivalent for setup and takedown, robustness, fit and finish, with the nod going to Sockler for accruing a number of small advantages, confirming its newer design and engineering. Which moves the notion of a Rorschach test from a verbal flourish to a real thing. This is equally true when looking at the two fluid heads, both very much what Cartoni or Sockler owners would expect. The primary differences, as always, or at least as long as I've known the brands, are continuously variable versus stepped adjustments for drag and counterbalance, a personal preference. And Sockler's larger, easier to manipulate locking levers for pan and tilt, a definite advantage, though, the Cartoni head looks more elegant, which in the grand scheme of things I acknowledge is essentially irrelevant. And the Sockler QR plate still allows the tripod screw to fall out. Definitely not irrelevant, yet still quite minor, if a bit annoying in a $2,000 plus piece of kit. Which is a nice segue into the fact that the differences between the two companies' fluid heads, at least at this level, have also narrowed a bit. With the SDS-8, Cartoni has adopted Sockler's quick release plate. At least, I saw it first on a Sockler, and it is different than the QR plate I have on my older uh, Cartoni Focus. Altered its locking mechanism for it as a result, and now includes dedicated space for extra mounting screws in case one gets lost. Though, to be fair, Cartoni's tripod screw does stay in place. M moving on. Sockler retains a lighted bubble level, but Cartoni has cut a corner here. The SDS level is unlit. And then again, if you use the cameras I do or others like them, Sony and Panasonic hybrids, it doesn't matter. They have levels built into the software and they're much easier to see given that they are displayed on the rear LCD panels of each. Which leaves us where exactly? Well, as I said at the beginning, and as I confirmed using both tripods during our continuing documentary series, Mariner East, 
Both are outstanding. But as always, neither is perfect. And frankly, which one I would prefer on any given day would likely be more a function of my mood, which side of bed I got out of, than anything else, which is not an awesome decision-making methodology. So back to the Rorschach and the details. As a modernist at heart, I imagine most days I'd prefer the colder, more mechanical, more precise, more clinical, more complete feel of the Sockler, from its click-stop adjustments, novel leg cross-section, fixed top-locking levers and multi-position leg locks, magnetized legs, lit level, and even a molded bag handle. Even if it does feel and sound a little more plasticky to me than the Cartoni. Which, on the other hand, might be one of the reasons why on another day I imagine I'd wake up a traditionalist, preferring the classical, cylindrical, and well-proven tube design of the Cartoni. Or perhaps I'd want to just delight in the simple fact that it's still made in Italy. In any case, given the world in which we live, this is a decision process born of a certain privilege I now more fully understand and acknowledge in my old age. Or, to put it differently, in the overall scheme of the human experience, many of these differences are trifles. What is incontrovertibly less trifling is price. If you're used to spending hundreds of dollars on tripods, spending a couple of thou is going to be a far more salient purchase criterion than any of the differences I've just laid out for you, especially when you realize that either tripod may cost as much or more than your camera. You have to ask yourself how much faster or how much are faster setup and takedown, lighter weight and more stability worth to me when compared to the tripod I already have. All I can tell you is, as I learned once again this time in Sedona with astrophotography, time lapses and pixel shifting, a super stable, super quick, and relatively lightweight tripod in the field matters a lot when the image and production pressures matter a lot. And these two are more stable and faster than anything else I've ever used or seen, especially the smaller, lighter, but high quality tripods I usually prefer. So, are you Darth Vader or Machine and Mensch? What does your gut tell you? Are you a traditionalist or a modernist? Does your work justify the expense? Does your workflow require frequent adjustments of the mid-level spreader? Or is it more often the case that you're moving between indoor and outdoor multiple times a day or operate in low light or, well, you get the idea. Perhaps most important of all, if you're already contemplating this kind of spend, what is your time frame for purchase? How certain are you of your choice and how important is a hundred bucks or so? Because, as I'm publishing this post, the Sockler Flotec FSB6 is in stock at B&H for $130 less than the SDS8, while the SD8's availability is listed as one to two weeks out, non cancelable and non-returnable. Uh, don't ask me why, I have no idea. I can hypothesize that maybe it's brand new and they haven't sorted it out, but anyway. If you like what you've seen here today, give a thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure to click on the notification icon, that little bell. Please join the conversation below. Share. Add to a playlist. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links or even making a direct contribution via the PayPal link below. We thank you for it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.